Hey, uh, I'm not sure that our connection is going to be good enough to have this. Um, I would say that if, I, if, there's, I uh, if it becomes too problematic, we can do it at another time when you have Wi-Fi or something like that. Um, just because it's so hard to, to discuss something when, yep. when I can only hear every third word. Yeah, Same. yeah, yeah. Now I'm, it's good. Sorry. Okay, cool. Uh, I can, I can so in the last debate, we've it. established that uh, government is forced yeah. to a degree that uh, a government that doesn't have or doesn't use force is basically pretty useless, right? So government. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, basically, the same could be said about cases, ANCAP. Okay, necessary. there's a lot yes. of things that wouldn't be necessary, <laughs> um, but to even have a government implies that you do need to use force of some kind, right? Okay. All right. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So, what's your what's your problem with ANCAP? Maybe I could uh, help you. Okay. Um. Look, I, I was hoping to get a definition or, or like some sort of how how you think it would work, but I'll just crack straight into the problems. I I reckon it'll in face. The the first one is that. I think you actually do need a body separate from contracts and, um, for example, property to enforce the ownership and fulfillment of contracts or property um, because often what happens, for example, is that two people enter into a consensual exchange or a bet um, and then when it turns out that one of them lost the bet, it's very, it would, it's very tempting to then just cease acknowledging the contract. So I think you need a body who's got no vested interest in who wins to make sure that the terms of the contract are fulfilled. Second problem I have is that I think there are many actors who are not proper economic actors and therefore cannot exist in a lawless uh, system. So, for example, children are poorly, uh, poorly taken care of by a system which, for example, relies on things like the ability to consent and the ability to interact, interact in an economic system. Uh, children can't do those things because they're too young, so they need, an ex again, an external body uh, to, to protect and regulate things in, in their interests. And then the, the last one is essential services. So I think for the functioning of any society to, to work properly, you need things like police, you need things like ambulances, you need things like roads and bridges. And uh, I think the problem is, is that there's a collective action problem because if you're in a community which, for example, decides communally to hire police or, or to have people to be policemen, then it's very tempting for any given person in that community to opt out of paying um, saying that, well, I'll never call the police or I'll never use their services, but the presence of the police is still a benefit they are accruing by the fact that they live nearby. So there's a problem where you can't really stop mo mooches. So that's why you need uh, like a body which everyone has to pay okay. into because at the end of the day, everyone inevitably benefits, so they all pay something. Those are the okay. three trivial problems I thought up. All right, so I would start by saying more, that quite literally that any children, argument so. that can be applied to ANCAP, uh, anarchy in general, can also equally be applied to any state. Um, you can, any what if scenario about what if this were to happen can equally be applied to, well, what if the state did that? But what would you do then? You know, for example, let's say that the state refused to enforce your contract or they refuse to decide it in a way um, that you found to be fair or just. Um, so every single moral philosophy, in fact, draws the line and at some point tells people to go fuck themselves. It just it depends on where you draw the line. The, the line is, in fact, drawn no matter what. It's just a matter of degree and in and, and which cases you tell people, oh, well, tough shit, um, and which cases you don't. Uh, the government commonly does this in, in any court case. You know, not everyone is going to be happy with the outcome, but, uh, you know, that the government just says tough shit. So the same could be applied to ANCAP. You know, uh, not everyone's going to be happy, obviously, but um, there's no real reason to suspect that the government leads to better outcomes. I would um, contrast my formulation of anarcho-capitalism, which is not based on an absolute faith in the non-aggression principle, also known as the NAP. Um, those people can largely be described as deontological anarcho-capitalists, anarcho -capitalists. Um, in my view, they tend to be the people who have come first. They're like they're, this is where they first came to the view. And uh, I guess once you stay in that view for a while, you, you start to find the problems with that view. And that's when you become a consequentialist ANCAP. 
that's when you say, well, the government can lead to good consequences sometimes, but is it a net negative or a net positive? Um, I would argue that governments tend to be net negative if we add up all the sum totality of government. Um, I would I would argue that it's a net negative. So it's not like either good or bad, in my opinion. It's just, it's a simply a question of economics. Is is it mostly good or is it mostly bad? And for me, the answer is simple. It's mostly bad. Um, okay. Um, so, 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 to, so you're basically a utilitarian and just says things would be better for more people. I believe that. Yeah. If, uh, if anarcho-capitalism was implemented. Right. So the problem is, is that your response was basically, well, look, any criticism you can levy at anarcho-capitalism, you can levy towards gov governments because it's a what if. Well, that that's not really a response because you didn't actually offer the logic Name as one. to why it, you could Name offer that criticism. Here, here's a good here's a good reason okay. as to why not. Uh, obviously, obviously, those, well, was I, a, I, 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 I'm most <laughs> familiar was, with, with you know the kids. Uh, what, what is it? The so so there was there was. In, there was who, who's going to enforce contract and property? Who's going okay. to take care of actors who are not, unable to consent and interact in economic systems? And okay. who is how so? To the first to stop question, we already have private services. arbitration. It seems to work just fine. Um, it there's you know lots and lots of laws that deal exclusively with private arbitration. There's no real argument for why this could not be extended. Uh, you know, absolutely to the criminal justice system, for example. I think what you would find in the absence of government is that certain laws would be less common and they would be utterly dependent on co a concept called commitment strategies, which I don't want to go into too far, um, but basically all animals have something called a commitment strategy, even fish or birds, for example. And that is to say, when they see another member of their species, in infringing on this imaginary social construct concept in their minds that, hey, this is my territory, this piece of coral or this rock is mine, and they are willing to fight for it. And any kind of fight is going to lead to negative consequences, usually for both parties, unless there's a significant size disparity between the two. So knowing that other fish see that see this fish inside of their area, they instinctively avoid it unless Unless they are willing to go to a fight. So that's that's kind of what commitment strategies uh, mean in general. So the concept of rights is based, every concept of right is based on that. It's based on just this belief that we imagine on our heads. It can be anything from territory to property in general. Property itself is an imaginary social construct. It's not a real thing. Um, there's no way that you can empirically demonstrate that your nose is yours. Why isn't that mine? Why isn't that my property? Well, it's part of my body. Okay, why isn't your body part of my property? It's all merely an assertion. Okay, so pro I think you're going a bit. Well, this is a fundamental question. So do you uh, know that uh, property is a uh, and rights in general are a social construct, right? They're not real things. Well. You you, you earlier on said that you're a consequentialist, so it shouldn't matter to you if they are or not. It should just depend on no, other things to get net yeah, positive. So it and net does negative matter outcomes. because so if I people no believe this the and then act in a the way world. that is consistent with their beliefs, then it leads to certain kinds of outcomes. Okay, so you got that. So, so there. Yeah. Okay, so, so there are already private ar it. arbitration <laughs> systems between you know. Uh, for, okay, go ahead. Can I respond to the private arbitration point? Yeah, so like what I said, it would be analogous to, to someone who decided not to show up to court. I mean, what what would you do? Yeah. So if someone okay, but what if the government to court, uh, tells you, you to go government. fuck yourself? Then then what do you do? Right. That's the, that's the point. But they do that all the time. Why why would a government do that? Yeah, what, they issue they, bench they warrant tell people and who you're under arrest to, to go fuck themselves, and they don't do something else okay so that's that's quite different as in they arrest you so so they offer a consequence for not complying yeah, they could that's not telling you to go fuck yourself what if they refuse to hear your case your actions what if they so, refuse so to hear good. your that's, case then what that's a fun kill that, that's yeah. what, what if the if the government refused to hear your case 
how, how can a government hang on how can you simultaneously not show up to court but also well, let's say, let's say they didn't though. not show like, up to court instead case, the government though, simply do, refused to, to hear their case they just said oh we don't want to deal with it. Yeah. so so this is this is a separate example now so you got to court and yeah, right, he decided to or you never made it to court because they it's didn't want to hear the case then what's what? So, so the court, okay, oh, well, then you could appeal. Sometimes like, they will never go to court at all. The governments like, are based strange. on force, so the government can always just tell you to go fuck yourself. I mean, they do that in North Korea. So, you don't always have rank with the okay. government. I don't know what gives you that impression. Um, just to be clear, it is not my burden to defend all forms of, of government or rule. Obviously, right, like governments have incentives. And the reason most governments hear people's cases is because for the government to, to succeed functionally over a long period of time. Okay, so why, why buy that could equally so be described of that. a private arbitration like, like, system like, that everyone liked and everyone agreed with and they thought was uh, really fair and just. Uh, what would uh, what's the difference? Okay, but well, the difference is. Well, the difference is, is that a private arbitration doesn't need the consent of everyone to continue. So, for example, if I opted in but you opted out, they could just go, well, like, we don't really need him. Like, like do you know what I mean? They only need a, a, a few people. Whereas the government, if it wants to claim jurisdiction over everybody, it needs to, to some extent, you know, get Okay, but the it. government can also There's force no people to why. do things they don't want to do. Like, for example, if I smoke weed, the government says I can't smoke weed. Uh, the government can simply uh, use force against me to prevent me from smoking weed and punish me for doing so. Yeah, but the, but that would be that like the logic you're running there is to say, oh, they don't. Yeah, no, no. The logic you're using is to say, oh, well, look, you know, it's the true. governments don't actually need to listen to the people because at the end of the day, they can force them. But that would be. But if that was true, then how did the original government of the, you know, how there was uh, a government war, before the war, United States, the war, British war. one, how did that collapse? Why don't they just force everyone? Oh, it's, right, right. So governments do actually have an incentive because, for example, governments don't really want to go to war. Right. Like it's much easier to just change the law and, and, you know, hear people's cases than it is to go to war. I agree. There are incentives. So the incentives line up correctly but, such that governments are incentivized. Right. So they line up in such a way that most governments are likely to hear people's cases. In the vast majority case. of the time, which is why they do. They don't hear tax so arguments. Instead of all. going into this <laughs> weird. Well, it, it doesn't. Yeah. You know, tax so the sovereign like, citizens, people arguments. like that. Well, that's because, so. because like, people... If, if, if you... Act, no, no, no. If you, if, you, if you actually have a... Like, sovereign citizens just claim that they're not bound by tax law. They don't actually have an illegal argument. That like, they're, they're, they're just idiots. You know, like, they, they don't hear people who don't... Like, actually, to be honest, actually, actually, to be real, actually, they actually do hear sovereign citizens' cases. Like, I've seen plenty of videos where sovereign citizens get up there and they make their case that actually I'm traveling, I'm not driving, and, you know, oh, I'm, I'm here representing X, I'm not actually X. So they do hear those cases, but then they find, as usual, that they're quite facile. And so they okay, so what if uh, so a private company or private arbitration uh, group heard your case, but uh, ultimately uh, 100% of the cases of this nature, they always roll against your favor? Right. So this is, and this is why you need a government, because it, 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 when it comes to a private arbitration, there are two parties, right? And one opts out then there's no incentive for them to opt in in the first place and there's no backup. You just have one aggrieved party and, and, and one party who's gotten away unfairly. There are, you need I mean, there are in fact, economic con incentives to agree pardon? by the rules of arbitration. Otherwise, it wouldn't exist. Right, but, but, but there aren't always economic incentives. Like, like, for example, if the arbitration is likely to result in you losing a lot of money, then you could, for example, use, um, you know, let's say the amount of money is X and you're likely to lose all of it. You could use X minus some amount to pay for security to, you know, to shield yourself from the consequences of, of the private arbitration. Because yes. like the private arbitration group, 
has no incentive I'm to get agree with you. Because this to, is, this to, is to a great point. Society. As yeah. you mentioned, so more is costly. Think, that's what, yeah. why in the absence of government, it would in fact be rare because it's not really in any private company's interest to go to war with other companies because wars are largely un, unsustainable unless you show, socialize the losses and you uh, capitalize the profits. So in the absence of that kind of system, which actually requires a state, uh, companies would actually have to bur burden all of the costs of their wars. And in fact, that would make war less, much less likely. And so that's your incentive. Well, I mean, but my, hang on, hang on. You're still going to have wars functionally. For, so for example, if, if, if I've got like, you know, let's go again, this much money and I could use this much of it to just force everyone off their property and take it. That would effectively be a warlike action, which I'd be incentivized to do in an anarcho-capitalist state no because there is no consequences for, for, um, for me doing that. I've actually impoverished all of them. No, because I've impoverished all of my opponents and I've taken all of their stuff. And so it's actually people don't fight war in wars and they don't like, resist. You know, large and, state body. And that's <laughs> not going to be bad for your, uh, your customers and they're well, if totally the going to do business with you in the future. Um, well, if, if you... If you're the one who owns all of the guns and they don't, and you've impoverished them of their ability to get them, that's you when you become security, a government. Well, then yeah, Adam. Right, but but then but then basically what you're saying is is that in an anarcho-capitalist state, every single person with uh, enough power effectively uh, becomes I, a government. I don't deny the fact that uh, that's the problem you know states could arise in the absence of the state. Of uh, they certainly can, given that all property is a social construct. I'm just saying that war is. Be, you know, based on economic reasons, war is going to be less likely in the absence of the state because you can't socialize the losses. You have to cover them yourself. Not, Can you imagine the Iraq war yeah. happening if we weren't able to, if the government wasn't paying for it? Like if, if Halliburton had to go actually go occupy Iraq by themselves and, you know, take over the oil field by themselves and deal with the resistance by themselves, do you think that kind of war would be more likely or less likely? Did you hear me? Or? Well, like ab absolutely that would happen because they wouldn't have a state to contend with. Like they would... Oh, yeah, yeah. I heard. I, I'm losing you completely well, right now. To to uh, and if the oil fields weren't defended by a state but only defended by peasants, then they would absolutely... Halliburton. Uh, okay, I, I can still hear you. Look, if Halliburton, <laughs> right didn't have to contend with a state yeah if Halliburton didn't have to contend I heard Halliburton had to contend with the states then it would be um, and nothing after that <laughs> yeah I can't hear you at all why does this only happen like halfway in the fucking debate and they probably would I can't hear you. I, I, I don't hear anything at all. Um, oh, shit. Well, just start, just come back, I guess, or, or whatever, because I can't hear you. Uh, well, I, I'll just talk, I guess, and then you can just jump in whenever you come back. Um, like I said, it would be very extremely difficult for any company to, to prosecute the kinds of wars that we've been prosecuting in the Middle East or, you know, in Vietnam, for example, because wars are very costly. Uh, it costs usually more than it's actually worth in benefit. And the only time this does not become economically true is if you can somehow socialize the losses and make other people pay, whereas you're still retaining your profits. That's the only way it could actually be profitable. Okay, okay so the problem is with your argument is that the costs of war come from the fact that there are states which you have to fight right if it was just an oil company versus a loose unfederated band of peasants then there are no costs of war. pardon we weren't fighting a state in iraq there were, we were not fighting a state in iraq you must except you know the invasion the besides the initial invasion no the okay. you know, we were <laughs> So besides the actual we fighting fighting. bit, there was no fight in <laughs> paradise. <laughs> well, we were there for 11 years. That government was toppled within months. So, Yeah. 
But, but the reason people, obviously people were somewhat aggrieved that their government was taken off them. Jeez, that's crazy. Like, yeah, but the war, not... could the war have continued in the absence of the state? Like if, if Halliburton had to fight uh, the entire reason, let's say Saddam was never there and it was just, you know, people who just fucking didn't want Halliburton uh, taking their oil. Uh, do you, is it your honest opinion that they would have been able to occupy Iraq for a decade by, all by themselves oh, and continue to reap the same what amount of profit? They wouldn't have to occupy all of Iraq, would they? They just have to occupy the oil fields. Secondly, who do you think okay. led all of the resistance? It was the ex-generals of the past state. How do you think okay. all the people knew how to fight and where did they get their weapons? They were weapons they had from the past state. So all of the costs of war are also states. Like, this is very easy stuff, man. I'm so like, do you honestly I mean, oh, think that there would be no war in anarcho capitalism? No, I just said it would be less, uh, just because the so the losses cannot be socialized, so it becomes unprofitable. In and general, so you know, been, there are exceptions. Been, the, you know, exceptions. Look, as as a general trend of history, as states have become more entrenched, wars have become increasingly rare. There are way less wars now than there were. You know, like in the, in the past decades, and even the, um, so, if anything, the more states have gotten entrenched, actually, the more uh, the less wars have happened. So I don't you, also say, this... you could also say, as economics has increased wealth, the exact same logic could apply. You can't okay, say so that. Let, that okay, that. so let's go back to the to the contract thing, right? The reason which wealth has been able to increase is because there has been a state which is which has been able to enforce things like contract. There has also been a state to do the other claims which you haven't addressed, like protect uneconomic actors like children and to secure things like essential services. So you can't have the economic growth without a state. Well, no. Uh, first of all, that's a separate argument. Whether or not anarcho-capitalism would have been a better system in the past is not uh, relevant to whether or not it would be a better system now or in the future. Um, it's certainly plausible that we could not have come to the state without the state. Uh, however, uh, as the state becomes more and more obsolete due to economics, there's really no reason to suggest that uh, it, we cannot continue making different functions of the state more and more obsolete, and over time it would be completely obsolete. This is exactly the argument <laughs> communists use, you know, where they say, oh, well, look, you know, capitalism gives us all of the wealth but once everyone's got everything then it'll be fine like you know sometimes you can destroy wealth right recessions can happen but absolutely with well, the, the, you, the, you, the wealth, wealth which the state has created the can state created obviously the wealth? disintegrate you do <laughs> also facil- destroy okay. facilitated the creation of like like obviously well, uh, on net wealth has increased, uh, and states. You know, religion so has also. Your claim that wealth. Too, uh, I mean, maybe it was uh, religion that did it. Unless I mean, it... you've not shown a. Well, you... no, no. Seriously, the Protestant work ethic um, is a well-known contributor to a lot of economic growth. The fact that people people do believe in things like you know, uh, uh, do do unto others as you would do yourself. It, could have definitely cons- um, you know, contributed okay. so to, to how state, willing was, people uh, were to follow those laws. Uh, now I lost you again. Those things are not like... Well, it's o- obviously, you know, sometimes that will be okay. Hold one. Alrighty, have you got me back? Yeah, gotcha. So sometimes more than one thing can, can lead to the same outcome. It, so, or, sure. or, I mean, you have to answer the basic, the basic criticism instead of non sequiturring off into war. Without the state, how are you going to enforce things like contracts? How are you going to make it so that if we go into a bet, like on a stock market or something, that, that if one of us loses... How do you how do you stop me from just saying, well, actually, I didn't really lose. I didn't. In fact, I was never in the contract to begin with. Go away. How do you stop that? Money can be put in escrow, uh, things of that nature. Private arbitration, as I suggested, otherwise. Um, well, what if end, I refuse but, private for arbitration? What well, if I end, what you? Yes. So in the end, what you are saying is, how do we force force? Right. We need a government for force. Right. Yes. In the most. So how do we cases. force? 
how do we force people to do things in the absence of the state? And see, that's that's why it was confusing to me earlier when you're disputing that government's based on force. I mean, of course it is. Why why else would we have a government? Like it, it wouldn't make sense otherwise. Uh, I, all I, all I just I just think the word's based on is very misleading. That's all. I did, I never. Do- okay, so basically, how do we force people to do things? Uh, can can I don't hear you now, and you're frozen too. Obviously, forces are a prerequisite for the most extreme cases. But what I'm saying is that... For- <clears throat> okay. Oh, Jesus. <sighs> how, how do you get people to follow their word? That, that's- how do we make people follow their word? So, once again, under the anarcho-capitalist system, we rely on the iron laws of economics, which are much stronger than, um, you know, arbitrary laws passed by humans. Um, economic laws tend to be more determinant and um, more binding. People don't have to. Oh, well, they actually do. It's kind of like the laws of physics. But pe- people do follow the laws of economics. So there can be a situation where we create incentives for people to behave well and disincentives for them not to behave well. For example, companies that agree to uh, certain, you know, private uh, arbitration organizations, uh, once they agree to these uh, things and then it's there, you know, a lot of business is in fact based on reputation. That's why you don't see a whole lot of CEOs, you know, saying, I hate niggers, fuck all the gays, you know, you don't see that very often because that's going to lead to less profit. There are, in fact, economic reasons why you don't engage in certain kinds of behavior, and that would not change at all in an anarcho-capitalist system. Like, economics still applies with or without any state. That's why you can have good cell phone reception in Somalia, even though there's no central government there. Uh, It's because economics still applies no matter what the situation is. People still need food. Uh, they still want to talk to other people so there's always going to be economics as long as humans exist yeah that doesn't prove the point though because if it's because if the bet we've engaged in is is i lose all of my wealth then it's obviously economically sensible for me to to <coughs> cop the reputational damage and keep the wealth which i have it's, so it's just saying that system and i'm not arguing that but i'm saying that would be no different follow, than the state you know, you know the, the state we, uh, decides yeah. that you know here in america we have asset forfeiture so they can basically just take all your shit um and it's very extremely extremely difficult to get it back and there's not much you can do about that you know if the state tells you to go fuck yourself what are you going to do Okay, well, if the other people in the society, is, you, uh, you know, they're fucking forms. idiots, like basically, you know, that. as voters That's are, they're do. totally ignorant to all the political issues. They probably have never even heard of the term asset forfeiture in the first place. Uh, they don't really know the diff- The politicians certainly don't talk about those issues. Uh, they don't really know the difference between the issues. Uh, here in America, we vote based upon, you know, m- much more petty things. You know, do you like the guy? Did he did he give some kind of speech that you found uh, persuasive? You know, it's it's basically it, it's more bullshit over here. So you could say that voting changes things, but uh, not really. Yep. Yep. But the, but but if you're going to say that, what if people act irrationally? Then they can also act uh, economically uh, irrationally. So you could say to your friends, almost everyone oh, is economically rational. Not everyone, but almost everyone. What if they don't know what's best for themselves economically? Yes. Are you, are you serious? Because you have to look at what economics is. If you try to measure it in terms of dollar amounts, that's not an accurate, accurate way to look at it. Uh, what you're describing is called a time preference. Uh, it, People actually do get joy out of gambling, so that's counted as a benefit to gambling uh, in the economic sense. Now, there are costs to gambling, but the perceived value of gambling is always going to be greater, otherwise it would not occur. You know, there are lots of people who, who are genuinely addicted, right? And, they, and there are also lots of people, by the way, who just don't understand the nature of e- economic arrangements. Like they just can't do the math on what an interest rate is. They don't understand the probability that certain things will happen. Lots of people are economically irrational actors. Uh, like you can't if really you understand economics in terms of perceived value and subjective value. 
No, I, I understand. So, but but what you're saying, it's what, still what subjectively true. Wrong? Like, you, do you know what I mean? Like the. I'll, I'll give you an example. Do you agree that value is subjective, well, or is there something? Is there no, such thing saying. as objective value? I, 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 I think there has to be what some objectively value. value. Not not claiming to know. I, I I I don't probably probably life and survival is is close. I haven't got perfect definitions here, but if if I I lost you again. I can't hear you. You're totally frozen, no, no, and okay, I can't hear anything. One moment. Okay, wait. Now I do. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I just want to say something real quick. Uh, the subjective theory of value is uh, the leading theory. I don't know that there are uh, a whole lot of disputes within the economic, you know, among economists. I think everyone pretty much agrees that value is subjective because there's no objective way for us to determine value. There's nothing that everyone agrees on 100%. And even if that was the case, it still wouldn't be objective because it's still within our minds. I'm back. So, look, the problem, the problem with your argument is, is that you, you, obviously some people can regret things, you know? Like they say, oh, I thought I was going to make money, but actually mm-hmm. I didn't make money. So you, two people can agree subjectively that money is important. People can just misunderstand what gets them there. Now, they don't take any joy out of that misunderstanding. There's, it's not like they look in retrospect and go, oh, but kind of wasn't it fun. So you can definitely, you can definitely act in a way which is against your own interests. Yeah, um, I think we're, we're using two different definitions of rationality. There's two kinds of rationality. There's instrumental rationality and epistemological uh, rationality. They're quite different. Uh, the, the way that we commonly use the term, like you and I, is when, you know, when someone's being irrational or when they're being rational. But instrumental rationality is quite different. It's doing things and actions that accomplish your actual goals you know, with it at that time rather than, you know, the, even though they might be, like, from our perspective, uh, they might be irrational. For example, if your goal is such that you want to drink a beer or, or whatnot, um, due to the fact that all value is subjective, we can objectively say that this is a bad choice, even if it later leads to something like kidney disease. Um, it's still instrumentally rational for them to actually buy that beer, only yeah. because it accomplishes yeah, Yes, but I, I, okay. Look, I I don't agree that all value is 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 subjective. But but what I was talking about is in what is relevant to your argument is instrumental rationality, because you were saying everyone is an economically rational actor. No, 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 no some it. people. But, you, you did you did you did you said nearly everyone is an economically rational actor. Okay, but now, that means uh, what I'm. What, well, so what I'm saying is that a lot of people don't actually know what is good for them. They make poor economic choices. Right. And I, again, and this you know, isn't one a, of the things that for government, though. Yes, it is. Absolutely, well, it is. because, because then these these irrational people are then gonna what uh, magically become rational or when they make their choices because hang on, I think you've lost me. Because when they make poor choices, the government actually makes them pay the price for those choices, as opposed to them throwing up their arms and saying, "Well, well economics imposes to costs that. too." I'll take Man, if you make poor run. choices, economics is still imposing costs on you. You know, if you get fucking lung cancer, for example, that's uh, that's definitely well, something. The government is not giving you lung cancer. That's uh, that's life. This is a, this is this is a non sequitur. If I enter a contract with you where we bet on the future price of a stock and then I turn out to be the loser because I didn't understand how it worked. With a state, I actually still have to pay you. Without a state, I just say, well, I never entered in that contract to begin with. You will say, well, why don't we do private arbitration? I will say, I want to do private arbitration. So, so I mean, the literally exact same thing could apply to the state itself. If the state... Basically, just takes your money without your consent, without uh, with no kind of consent at all. There isn't anything you can do in that scenario either. So, wow. No, 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 no. That, that is that is a non sequitur. 
I, you're, you are using a different example. Focus on the one example. In the example where you enter a contract and then you don't want to pay up, the state enforces the contract. No, and I. Okay, so I, once again, uh, you have economic state uh, incentives. Right. right. There is no uh, incentive for me to go into private arbitration. I'm losing you again. I'm going to lose. Yeah, yeah so, there is an incentive. So there's, there's, without a state, there is no incentive for me to hold keep my wall. No, but there okay. is an incentive. Without, there's still economics without a state, in the absence there is of no a state. There is a reason wall. why you want your reputation to be such that when you agree to private arbitration and then you break your contract, uh, that's going to be bad for your reputation and the other party might be willing to use force to recover their losses. I mean, in the same way that a state would. So really all you're doing is outsourcing the, outsourcing the issue to... You know, okay. And I, I don't... I've already responded to this, which you've ignored. So you can measure those things up. You can say, look, if the cost of my reputation is X, but I'm losing X plus 500, then I'll cop the damage to my reputation or I'll move somewhere else so that it doesn't matter. Or if, uh, okay. I, you know, maybe well, I am stronger maybe, than them. So I, maybe you know what I mean? Like there there's some kind of enforcement mechanism to, in the to, absence to of the state. Belief. Maybe, uh, maybe the aggrieved party can go to, uh, they can outsource and contract to someone who is willing to recover the, the funds that you ran off with. I mean, how would that be different from a state? Well, because if the, if, if that's an available because option, then why not just pay them to recover? You already funds from have acknowledged even, it and like, just from everyone. That's going to be just pay someone because to why doesn't the government people? do that, right? No, 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 no. Hang on. But if if the money you are stealing exceeds the money, so then why doesn't the government just start robbing stolen, people? Oh wait, they already do. It's and it isn't costly. Decision. In fact, it's a net positive. Revolution, right, exactly. So there's going to be resistance, right? Keep, and so you can imagine if people about. if if people are willing to resist a state, which is fucking yeah, hard. Do, first of all, why on earth would they not resist some? imagine other imaginary institution calling itself a corporation or a company or a business or so they because can resist they the might state. not have the how could you resist the state the but not a private to. company that like, makes what, no why, sense why, whatsoever do you know what i mean like Well, because, uh, for example, other states will come to help you or, you, for example, you know that you have enough allies who, who are similarly aggrieved because when a state pisses someone off, they piss, because when a state pisses, pisses every, enough people off, they piss tons of people off. When a private company does it, they just have to make sure that they only steal from so many people that they could never collectivize. Whereas when a government the steals part of that because of laws, they have to steal from everyone. Pardon? You're losing me again. I, I all I heard was when a state steals and then nothing because it operates in sledgehammery law ways. You have to. Okay. Okay. One moment. One moment. Uh, to me, it's, it seems crazy that someone could resist a state. Because when a state pisses people off, they piss everyone off, right? So there is a large amount of resistance. Okay. If it's a private company, they just only steal from enough people oh, okay, that they no. couldn't effectively collectivize against them. So what you end up getting I'm is you get, like every second word, like you know, ten or fifteen different private companies all plundering. Uh, okay. This might, if, if, if it's not working out, it might not work out. I'll, I'll give it one more go. When the state steals, they piss everyone off, right? Because mm -hmm. the laws are fairly universal. When private companies steal, they can steal from, a, a, from enough, a small enough group of people that they can't effectively collectivize against them. 
So you end up getting like a, a handful of companies stealing from enough separate people that there's never the capacity. Well, I would argue that's already the government. They always have to deal with um, the I would say that the state is, in fact, mostly stealing from one group of people, the wealthy. Um, and then they are then using this to whatever ends they wish for more or less. Um, so I don't see how that how we would distinguish between, you know, a, a roving uh, a gang such as the state and, you know, a smaller gang such as a corporation or a group of corporations. Uh, which, by the way, I want to make one, can I make one quick point. A corporation is, in fact, a creation of the well, state. Because- a corporation yeah. simply cannot exist uh, in the absence yeah. of a state. Um, a corporation is simply a piece of paper declaring that they are an actual entity that has some kind of legal rights. Uh, their rights are protected by the state itself. So in the absence of the yeah. state, I think you'd probably have uh, corporations would take on a much different role than they currently do. Yeah, well, obviously they'd have to pay for their own security and they become more inefficient. But you haven't actually answered the question. Like the re- the re- the reason which got which the rich don't rebel <laughs> rebel against the government despite tax is because ultimately the government helps them more than they help them. They facilitate a lot of, a lot of things like schools to, and roads and uh, trade deals. The government, however, um, so there's no real. Them. So let's say uh, a private corporation decides I don't know yeah. to invade some small town. Is is that uh, is that what you're suggesting here? Like if you're clever, for example, you'd actually steal from, for example, four or five individuals in each separate town, so that they could. Oh, if you were clever, I, I survive properly. I heard two or three people in a town and then collect the place properly. Okay. Oh. Right. You would, you would, you would only steal. You would only steal from two or three people in every town. Because that way they could never collectivize. Okay. Um, how, how would they go about doing that exactly? I, I don't understand. Well, they could, they could either enter a contract and then not fulfill their end of the bargain, or they could pay a, you know, a debt collector to just so collect money people, from them by force. Okay, in the first Use one, would people continue doing business with this corporation if they had a reputation for robbing and stealing people from people? Is that likely? Uh, you're frozen now, and uh, shit, not again. Uh, anyhow, I, I guess I, I want to wrap this up by saying any argument that you apply towards NCAP can equally be applied to the state. The state can also rob certain individuals within towns, such as the rich or whomever. You know, they can just confiscate property using eminent domain or something of that nature. There's not a whole lot you can do about it. You can go to court, but if they don't rule in your favor, you're just uh, you're out of luck. Um, there's not much you can do about it. So uh, to me, it seems that wars would be much less likely in the absence of the state because the losses cannot be socialized, cannot be socialized throughout the entire society. Um, they have to actually cover their own costs of war and enforcement and things like that. So if they're paying all these upfront costs uh, to these other people who are then robbing others, it seems like that kind of system would create a lot of resistance from the people um, because nobody wants to get robbed. And if the people are resisting to the degree that they do resist, it's going to be very costly. And so that is a large economic incentive not to engage in that kind of behavior because otherwise you're going to be creating a lot of enemies and people are going to be wanting, you know, it may not stop in the places that you're invading or stealing from. They may decide to go to your corporate headquarters and blow the motherfucker up. And there ain't a whole lot that, uh, it, you know, corporations in general are going to want to avoid that kind of shit. So uh, they, they, they do have very strong economic incentives not to behave in a certain way. And I would argue that in the absence of the state, certain kinds of laws probably would not exist um, and others would exist due to economics. For example, robbing, stealing, killing, there's obvious economic reasons why you wouldn't do that. Uh, first and foremost is the risk involved. You know, you, you could in fact be killed or hurt while engaging in these kinds of activities. Um, so then other kinds of laws, for example, someone smoking weed in their house, you're probably not going to spend too much money to enforce that kind of law because there's very little benefit to be gained um, and there's high costs. You're going to have to have people going around making sure that people aren't smoking weed and you're going to have to have somewhere to 
place these people who are smoking weed. So those kinds of laws that have, uh, you know, not a whole lot of benefit to society, but, uh, you know, exist anyways, those probably uh, are going to be much less likely for economic reasons, only because it's uh, it's costly to enforce certain laws. So there, in order to justify those costs, you have to have, you know, very clear and obvious benefits. And such is not the case for, you know, many kinds of laws, such as, you know, uh, drug laws, for example. Uh, if you can hear me, thank